other historical themes that have been integral to the development of the United States are our interactions with Hispanic-speaking peoples, with Native Americans, and with the treatment of women. The relationship between Anglo-Americans and Hispanic Americans is complicated. Take a minute to think about our conception of race in North and South America. In North America, we see whites, blacks, Asians, Native Americans, other immigrant groups. We have them listed in categories on the census. But when we look at Latin America, who has those same divisions and groups, we lump everyone, black, native, white, into the linguistic category of Hispanic. Isn't that odd? We talk about black and white native North Americans, but not black and white native South Americans. They're all lumped into the category of Hispanic, which causes all sorts of strange issues and problems administratively and relationally. The historical facts from our development are that the southwestern part of North America, including California, were colonized by the Spanish, later Mexican, and of course they had seized it from the native peoples just like the Anglo-Americans seized the rest of the U.S. from native peoples. The historical facts are that in the 19th century the United States invaded and annexed part of Mexico, a land already inhabited by Spanish-speaking peoples, and the Anglo-Americans were immigrants to this region, which was inhabited by Hispanic peoples. Again, we're talking about California. Of course, immigration from Mexico continued after the U.S. annexation and continues today. That's part of the complexity. Who is the immigrant is an ongoing question. U.S. expansion was part of something that we sometimes call manifest or God-ordained destiny. Many believed, and still believe, that it was our God-given destiny to take over North America. You were probably raised on this in your elementary school. The narrative was that the Western expansion of the brave and noble pioneers who had to fight the Indians to survive, rather than a narrative of invasion and occupation and genocide. Depends who's telling the story. The indigenous people were not seen as equal to the European people. They did not organize themselves in the same way. They didn't have borders in the same way. And so it was our right to conquer them and put the land to more constructive use. Most of you have heard the stories of broken treaties and promises and wars and disease. It's a dismal history. The Native American population declined from tens of millions to some 200,000 by the beginning of the 20th century. We developed a concept of what's called American exceptionalism. We are different. We are better. The rest of the world should listen to us. Those we conquer should be grateful that they are now part of America. And this is still part of our culture. America is the best country in the world. We are the most moral and the most powerful. Other countries should listen to what we have to say. There are many things about America that have been good. We've been a force for good in many ways. And affirming the reality of our history doesn't deny that. You're not opposing America when you analyze strengths and weaknesses. Only by understanding the reality of who we are can we truly deal with it?